A very good morning to all of you. I would love to hear that once again from you. I one. And yes, we have reached the closing ceremony of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019, which was happening for the last couple of weeks, rather one and a half weeks, with the executives meeting happening last week from the 21st onwards and today being the 29th of November. Though it's a Friday, usually when it comes to Fridays, it happens to be the TGIFs, isn't it? But still, today happens to be the day that we say goodbye to our dear friends who came from nearly 15 universities representing different countries, 100 energetic volunteers, 50 participants, and all who were engaged in this Youth Forum 2019. Probably you must have enjoyed and had a great week here in Sri Lanka, the beautiful Paradise Island, isn't it? Hope you enjoyed your stay here. Yes, indeed. Well, with that, as we are to commence the closing ceremony today, of the Youth Forum of Asian Universities Alliance 2019. It's time for me to invite the energetic personality behind organizing this and also who's, who has been keeping this drive throughout the weeks and rather the months, the past couple of months, to address you and to give the opening remarks of the closing ceremony. It's time for me to invite Dr. Chaturangarana Singha, the chairperson of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019. Very good morning to you, Aibo One. Right, we are reaching the closing ceremony. Madam Vice Chancellor, Senior Professor Chandrika and Vijayaratna, who is the Executive President of the Asian Universities Alliance of 2019-20. The representative from the WHO, Dr. Padmaldi Silva. The representative from the UNFPA, uh, Ms. Achini Vijay Singha. The Rector of the Shripalit Campus, Professor Hetiarachi, the director of UCSC, Professor Heva Gamage, deans representing all faculties, senior academics, Professor Nazima Kamadin, the administrative staff of uh, uh, University of Colombo, including uh, yeah, the administrative staff of University of Colombo, the resource persons uh, representing the AUF, uh, Professor Pianjali de Soisa, and all the distinguished invitees my colleagues of the organizing committee, my energetic volunteers, and of course, our dear friends, students of the AUA Youth Forum 2020, representing 11 universities this time. This today, my opening remarks would kind of cover what is the objective of in the next one and a half hours. We had three events being operating last six months being organized. We had the Asian Universities Alliance executive meeting, the annual research symposium, and then the youth forum, all in health and well-being, the object of health and well-being. And we had a very energetic team representing all faculties, and most of the events were in the UCSC, the Sri Pali campus, and also other faculties. All the resource persons were representing medical faculty mainly. And we had UOC Tourism, the Emergency Medicine uh, Society of Sri Lanka, the media, especially the Sirasa, and also a lot of media personalities coming in, helping us out. And we have been partnering with the WHO Sri Lanka office, and also so Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka tourism in this aspect. The five-day program we had planned was mainly on three aspects. It was on academic, cultural, and social aspects. The academic program, under the theme of health and well-being, had mainly six themes, mainly focusing on the risk factors of NCDs, the non-communicable diseases. Number one was nutrition, physical activity, mental health, sexual health, um, alcohol, tobacco, and substance use, and also the climate change, the climate justice. So today, in the next one hour, we will have six groups who have been operating last five days in a mixed a mix group will be presenting their projects that could be implemented in the Asian region, maybe individual, society level, or in their campuses, or in the regional level, what they think that they could do to take this forward. So we have these six groups presenting in 10-minute presentations, 
and there will be five minutes for feedback from the, the expert panel here. So uh, they will be focusing and we try to focus on their innovativeness, creativity and also feasibility of these projects. And also we had some mini sessions going on in the medical faculties, the science faculty. The students were involved uh, before the event also. So they also have some suggestions that we will present uh, in the next couple of, uh, after the presentations. So with that, I also just wanted to let you know the, uh, the, the universities who were involved. We had Chu Long Gong from Thailand, two students. We had Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Hong Kong, three students. We have Nasar Bayab, University of Kazakhstan, six students. Uh, we have two universities from China, uh, Xinhua, six students, five students, and Peking, three students. We have uh, South Korea, University of Seoul, three students, and University of Indonesia, four, University of Malaya, five, University of Tokyo, Japan, five, and University of Yangon, Mala Myanmar, five, and University of Colombo, five students. Altogether, 45 students were here. So I will open up the next session and we will have a small uh, video of the, four, of the four days, what happened uh, uh, in the four days. So I will enjoy, let you enjoy that. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. Well-being beyond health. Asian University Alliance Youth Forum 2019. University of Colombo.
Asian University Alliance Youth Forum 2019, University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. So that's how the week looked like, isn't it? Shall we put a big round of applause once again? This is for the Asian University Alliance Youth Forum 2019, Colombo, Sri Lanka. The theme was Arogya Paramalaba, well-being beyond health. We had sessions, we had programs on different topics, and hope you had an exciting week with all these sessions. And as Dr. Chaturanga did mention about, we had from the very first day, we had about mental health, the well-being of uh, the cyber age, nutrition, we had yoga sessions, and then we had about sexual health, field visit to Sri Pali campus, which happens to be the most exciting day of your week, I believe, and also a lot of cultural and entertainment items, and which was keeping you alive with this Youth Forum 2019 here in Sri Lanka, happening for the very first time here in Sri Lanka. So with that, as uh, we mentioned at the very beginning, one of the major events of today's closing ceremony happens to be the presentations of the groups. You were put into six groups and you all had discussions on different matters and this is probably about the youth empowerment and to take it to your countries, to your communities after today. So yes, it's time for me to hand over uh, to the moderator of the panel discussion as well as the group presentations, Dr. Inoka Pereira. He will conduct the sessions with your presentations. Over to you, Doctor. Good morning to all of you. So over the past four days, our um, participants have gone through a very extensive program. And today, it comes to an end with their presentation. Um, so they've been making their presentations all night. And it was a little difficult to get them up also in the morning. <laughs> right? OK. So um, I got two presentations here. Um, so basically, uh, what will happen is um, under the six broad topics that you were discussing, we have given you the task of come up with uh, proposals to take this forward. So under the uh, topics, the mental uh, health and well-being in the cyber age, um, nutrition, alcohol, tobacco, and substance use, uh, sexual health, physical activities, and climate justice were the six topics that you're going to tackle today, right? So after your presentations, our panel of judges will, um, will um, give you some comments to improve your um, presentation or the proposal, and then uh, they will give you some marks to encourage you, um, encourage you, and we will select the best three presentations, right? It is just, a, um, just to encourage you to uh, take these, this work forward. Um, so let me um, look at the two presentations that were given to me, and the ones that are ready, we will start off with those. All right, so we'll start with group three. Can the, uh, can the group three come onto stage? All right, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. 
back in to it here. Let me just uh, oh, what just happened? All right, let's go up and have a drink. Oh no, I forgot to switch. All right, so um, they will be um, presenting their uh, their proposal in the uh, broad topic of sexual health. Hello, everybody. Are you born? This, this. Uh, this is more convenient for me as I can walk. Okay, so hello everyone. We are from group three, Ayubo Van. So we, from the group three, we were given the topic of sexual health. No, sexual health, I mean, it's quite a taboo in our, you know, in our country, in our, even in my country, and it's a quite a taboo topic in the Asia. But we are striving to breach the gap between that. So before we go further, I would like to give some kind of a, I would say like a background, like a background study on this. Okay, this is just the name of the uh, project that we have. We will be explaining further by our next handsome presenter over here. Okay, so the background, a bit of a background. Oh, I have like a case example. So it's a bit wordy, but never mind. I'll explain it to you in a storytelling. So as a case example, for example, there's a girl named Chapa is a 17 years old girl who lives from Asia land and utopia. She is not a utopia, it's a dystopia. She has a big sister who she loves so much. She lives with little infrastructure, but she receives education up to high school. In her school, there is no sex education. Mm -hmm. Then she has to go to college in the capital. And when she was in the college, was in the studying, she has a boyfriend. And one day her boyfriend asked her to do <coughs> sexual activity with her. She never understand how to do it, so she decided to ask her big sister, who is working as a merchant in a village, but not yet married. But her sister was so shocked and angry when she asked about it, and she refuses to talk about it. She then got confused, but she, she then just decided to continue her plan with her boyfriend because of his pressure. And at the end, she ended up getting pregnant and also got an STD on top of that. She was ashamed and got depressed and she killed herself. Now this is quite a depressing story and what I want to outline here is that can you see the problem? Yes, no? Can I hear some voices? Can you see the problem here? Yeah, you know, yes, no, okay. <laughs> Never mind, I'll tell you the problem is. Um, the pointer, okay, we, ah, the pointer's working. Okay, so the problem is that she ended up getting pregnant and STD. So she has an unwanted pregnancy. And on top of that, she got contracted with a sexually transmitted disease. And because of the burden of the socially unacceptable norms, she killed herself. So this problem seems to be very big, but there's a lot of contributing underlying causes. So. It's actually in the story, if you can detect. So we just go through it. Some of the causes is that, for example, she has little infrastructure, meaning that she has little access to education. And also, uh, the key point is that she has, there was no sex education in Asia land. And when she wanted to consult with her family, the one that she thought that she can consult, we can confide by, her sister refuses to talk about it. And on top of that, it was, she was given some kind of a pressure to go, just go with the flow. And lastly, she was ashamed. Ashamed as in she was thinking that this is some kind of a socially unacceptable thing and she has nowhere to go. So with all this in mind, with all these underlying causes in mind, we have seen that this is not something uncommon in our place. In, uh, not uncommon in Asia. So. This is something that I would say, like we, we say it between ourselves that, well, Asia, we are so diverse. We have their very, very different culture between each other, even though we're so close by. We have so rich history, but we all have this one common thing between us, is that we have the fear of talking about sexual education and sexual awareness. So that's where we step in. We step in, oh yeah, before this. 
So we're just going to tell you there are like a statistics showing how the STDs, uh, the rate is. It's not really declining, whether not declining and not really increasing, but there is a constant a number. So we going to present to you our solution to this convoluted problem, a simple solution, which we call a snake and ladder and you, a guide from childhood to parenthood. And with that, I shall give the floor to Faza to continue. All right, thank you. Such a really comprehensive briefing about what are we trying to do. So in the matter of one night, we were trying to think what's the best solution to tackle this problem. We also think we also have this common similarity of taboo talking about sex education itself. So we're trying to bridge that taboo by doing or making something that is not that direct about talking about stuff. And we're trying to implement it in a game called the snake and ladder, as you might all have known or have played before. And we, and in our version, it is called a guide from childhood to parenthood. And I will explain later why. So in this game, we're trying to envision a healthy Asian family that could discuss this matter of things, the matter of sexual practices. And we, a we are aiming to prevent unwanted pregnancies and also the spread of sexual transmitted diseases, which could be shown in the case that we've shown before. But in from what we really want is to bridge, bridge the gap of taboo, bridge the gap of communication between families and between communities, so this kind of topic can be discussed well in the community itself. So I said, so this is the example of the game. Pretty straightforward, right? This is just a regular snake and ladder. But then, for example, I'm gonna play, and then I have this character, the emoji green character, and of course, we're gonna roll the dice. And then, for example, we got the number four. So we move to the number four. And then, we have this ladder that's going up, but in regular snake and ladder, you're, gonna, you're going to step right up. But in this game, you have to answer a question first. The example of the question is something easy like this. For example, where you can buy condoms. The people who get the answer should be able to, ask to answer the question. And I'm hoping that you guys already know the answer. So where is it? Can I hear some sound? Where do you think? Convenience stores? Other places maybe? Pharmacies, yeah, that's right. So it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple, like mini market or supermarket. And if you get it right, then you can move forward. So it's kind of bit dissimilar, still similar to the snake and ladder that we used to play, but we just add a little bit spice to it, a little bit kick to it. So uh, besides playing and having fun, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to get a really com uh, comprehensive sexual education. And in this project that we're trying to create, we are planning to make a three types of different decks, a childhood deck, an adolescent deck, and adulthood deck. Because we really want to encompass all the age groups that's possible, but in the same time, we can also target it as more specifically. So, for example, if I was still seven years old, I'm, gonna, I'm going to play the childhood deck. And if I were like 13 to 18, I'm, I'm going to play the adolescent deck, and so on. The type of question is going to be different in accordance to the age group because I know this is still a s we know that this is still a sensitive topic to be dis to be talked about, so we have to adjust to the common customs as well. So, for example, this is the type of question that you would get in the childhood deck. Uh, this is the question: Imagine today you return home by bus and there's not so many people and you cannot find a seat, but then there's a strange man who asks. Uh, who's been standing to you and deliberately leaning against you. When you move to avoid, he also moves and keeps close to you. And so what would you do in this case? Can I get some answers? All right, yelling, nice. Any other answers? Okay, so for example, we're going to give the example like this. The answer should be ask a conductor for help, or maybe you can just stop the man and let other passengers around you hear. So the screaming was pretty right. And this is the type of example of adulthood deck. The question is, what would you do? What would, you be, what would be your answer if your child asked where they are from? And we can answer it according to the age group itself as well. So from this project, we are hoping that we can, tack, we can create this project because we uh, expect some of the strength of this project, which is first, it's so easy to develop. 
and it's relatively cheap to produce, and it, but what's more important is we can build conversation in family circles of friends and community. community. So for example, I'm playing with him, and when we're playing, we're, gonna we're going to discuss things that were being questioned in the deck itself. So it bridges the gap of taboo or awkwardness between the community or, co uh, or family what, uh, by using this game. And it can be widely distributed in the community because it's only in the form of boards. You can find it in villages and anywhere you, you would see it. But in the same time, it can also be adopted to an online platform because you can see nowadays every board game that you have is already available in the internet. And this is the rough development project scheme that we are, we are trying to implement. So in, if, they were, if this were to be published later on, we have already the timeline. And how would we evaluate the effectiveness? We're going to do a two different types of evaluation. First of all is the primary one, and the second of all is the secondary one. Primary one is of course to know how's the project impacting primarily by doing online assessment or questionnaire or surveys. But then we really need to see the impact in the broader scale, broader scope. So we want to know like how is the data of unwanted pregnancy or unsafe abortion or use of contraceptive measures in one country being affected by the project that we've created so far. All right, so that's it uh, from our presentation. I hope this gave you some insights and we're um, really glad to hear some feedbacks or question and answer, thank you. That's what we would call innovativeness. Can we start the discussion? Uh, maybe uh, Professor Chandrika Vijayaratna could. Uh, Thank she you was very one much. Uh, I think that's an excellent uh, synopsis of the problem that we all face in our country. And coming from the youth, who are the people who have to suffer it most, I believe it make has so much greater meaning. Uh, your this is a very sim very clear objectives, very very creative and very applicable and therefore and whatever society and the fact that you stratified according to the age group was a very um, very mature outlook and I congratulate you on that uh. Let me again congratulate you on a very nicely presented and very innovative uh, intervention. Uh, I really want to tell, ap appreciate that you have selected a uh, uh, universally known game so that everyone is aware of that and there won't be any uh, like uh, stigma in using that game for your learning purposes. And it's really nice that you have selected for age categories as well. And it would be good to pilot this and scale it up if possible. And one question, what happens when you go to a snake? <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing with you when you go to the ladder. So when you answer correctly in the ladder, you go up. But when you answer correctly in the snake, then you're still going to be there. You're still going to be there. You're not going to go down. Okay, so good, it's good. create a more competitive sense in yourself. Good. Thank you for that. You caught my attention from the very first slide with uh, a very comprehensive uh, case study, which I think was inspired by the UNFPA session, <laughs> right? And you kept the name, and it shows me that you have really grasped the very complex social situation that we tried to um, give away, right? And like uh, Madam Vice Chancellor said, the simplicity of the solution just blew my mind. I think this is something that everybody has been struggling with for years in our region. And I think this is these type of simple solutions coming up, coming from young people like you, really need to be given attention and taken forward. 
So I hope uh, there will be opportunities to work with you further. Do stay in touch and all the best. I would also say think a little bit about your evaluation criteria. It would be very difficult to do the secondary level evaluation because uh, you know the variables are so high, there are so many things to consider. So um, you would not it would not be easy to see the impact of your work, you know, because there are other things at play as well. So I would say pay a little attention there that there's room for improvement, but great job overall. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that constructive criticism on their board game. It was very innovative, I would think. Um, so what would happen is we will gather all these innovative ideas after this um, forum and we will forward them and try to get them implemented through the uh, AUA. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> the next um, group would be group number six. Group number six will uh, have a proposal on the broad topic of climate justice. All right, let's give a round of applause to group number six. Are you Bowen? Good morning, everyone. Uh, we form team number six. Uh, we call ourselves like team champions. Okay, so today our topic is about climate change. Uh, as everyone knows that climate change is happening and is like, is become our current issue now. So, and, but there are plenty of things individuals can do to mitigate it. So our group will focus on how we as a potential youth can deal with this issue. So here is our discussion points for today, namely awareness, technology and innovation, networking, and public policy. So let's begin with the first one, awareness. To raise awareness among people about climate change, we, ha we come up with three easy ways. The first one is to uh, social media influencers to inspire changes into green living and to make a uh, positive impact on the planet matters through various, uh, you can see there like uh, online platform like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our example here is uh, the viral campaign called Team Tree, uh, launched by YouTubers, aiming to raise 20 million uh, US dollars by 2020 and also plan, uh, to plant 20 million trees around the world. This campaign now can uh, have raised over $16 million with support from uh, more than 600 influencers. So we can see how like uh, social media influencers have an impact on raising awareness, like public awareness about like environmental issues. So the second way is the climate change education. We believe that education is an essential element of the global response to climate change. And so like uh, we, we decided that we can, we can do uh, promote climate change education both on campus and off campus. For on campus, we can do it by maybe uh, like uh, having kind of like group 
or activities that we have together or have kind of exhibition booths or uh, having seminars. But for uh, off campus, we will, we will mention the example about the trash tag. It is like a viral challenge now, which is prompting people around the world to clean up the nearby green areas and post the before and after photos. So it went like viral now. And the last one, we think about to using the climate change art, uh, which is uh, generally intended to overcome humans' hardwired tendency to to value personal experience over data and to de disengage database representat representations by making uh, the data more vivid and accessible. So as we see on the last Wednesday at Sipali campus, there are one uh, performing arts that they use the plastic bag to represent how it uh, affects our, uh, our environment. So that that performing art also make us think about what can we do with this issue. So now my friend gonna continue the next point. Hello everyone, my name is Yi Chao, I'm from University of Yangon. I'm going to talk about technology and innovations for, for the environment and climate change. Uh, in this age of technology, we need to create and develop more projects, more technologies to help the climate and and to help the climate and to fight against climate change. So, so we all know that fossil fuels, which we use in our cars and daily vehicles, causes a lot of carbon emits a lot of carbon dioxide and is very harmful for our planet. So. We, we all know that there are renewable resources like wind energy, solar energy, and hydropower energy. So uh, these projects are so expensive and they are so big that they can only be done by the government. Yeah, and so what, what we like to talk about now is like what we can do, what, what little things we can do. I mean, there's a saying in my country that uh, you can make a while, you can make a while by combining seeds of bean, you see? so. You can be uh, each of these beans to make wild, you know? Uh, little things, do little things, and combine those little things to make big things. So what I like to talk about here is what we can do for f what we ca each of us can do f to help the climate. Like, we can develop, you know, we can develop uh, eatable pipes and eatable cups. It's very easy as well, you know? Do uh, you have efforts to make an eatable straw? You, at first, you have to melt the candy, then you can just roll it, then you use it as a straw. I mean, it is a very important case because many turtles in the ocean think that the plastic straws are their food and they've been consuming them and, and most of them end up, ended up being killed by those plastic straws. So these eatable straws are like little things what you can do to help the climate. And uh, yes, so, well, uh, what we have on the left side here, it, those are the worms, rub worms that eat styrofoams and plastic. Uh, yes, many people find them disgusting or, yeah, disgusting, but uh, but I recommend that they are very eco-friendly and they can be our friends, our friends ac to fight against the climate. It's like, uh, it's they are so easy to grow as well. You you can just get, get some land, uh, you can just some soil, soil and water and some paper and you can just grow them in a little box. Then you put styrofoam in there and they, they just decompose them. Uh, like, you know, styrofoams take uh, hundreds of hundreds of years to decompose, so uh, they can be very eco-friendly as well. So, so, and next, my friend Jason is about to talk, talk about uh, global cooperation and policies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, I'm Jason from Tsinghua University, China, and I'm going to introduce you to our very unique proposal. To our uni very unique proposal to address the really big problem of climate change. And we all know that we have actually many in international organizations that is aiming to address the various kinds of problems in our society. But we do not have like an uh, association for the coordination of solving the problem of climate change. So we are proposing that we now are incorporating and combining all these 
systems and institutions together to form uh, what we call is the green circle. It's like, for example, Isaac. Is there any Isaacer here? I mean, sure, right. So it's, it's like an international organization that is run by students, and students would actually exchange to other universities or maybe countries to do like volunteer work related to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And it's like the biggest non nonprofit organization in the world that is run by students now, I think. So it is really a good framework to, to, to do some good thing about the planet. And we hope that we could utilize the framework so that we could make in interactions between countries and universities much easier. And another platform would be just the manifest manifesto that we signed yesterday. We, I think all of the delegates actually signed the document to promising that we should address the, pro the problem of our planet together. And I think it would be a really good starting point if we could actually continue on our work on this topic. And uh, thus, we have the green circle. It's like an alliance of universities that is willing to address the problem of climate justice. And we hope that through you know, exchanging activities through um, each university would shoulder their responsibility to solve the problem that we are facing now. I think we wouldn't, we wouldn't get a solution really soon, but it is a starting point, and we have to start any, anyway. So we would like, for example, we would like have a model climate change conferences in, during the, in, in the framework of the Green Circle. I believe you guys would know Moto United Nations conferences. It's like um, all students from different universities would like play the role of delegates from different countries and um, we would like to find a resolution to an important problem. And now since climate change is really, really a big problem now, we have um, MCCC, that's the Model Climate Change Conferences. We would like um, the university that is hosting the Green Circle this year would like host a conference of MCCC and well next time uh, next year the host would change and we would have a rotating presidency just like the AUA Youth Forum. Well um, I would like to introduce you to the UN SDGs and we have actually two very related topics on it. The, the 12th uh, SDG is responsible consumption and production. Just as my friends just told you, we have different techniques to, to make, make the waste less and to pr protect our planet. And the third one is actually directly related to our topic, that is climate action. We need to take action. Just like, um, just like any, any other press pressing issue on this planet, like war and peace and other stuff, climate change is real and climate change is happening. We have to do something right now. So we would also propose that our delegates from different universities would actually form a network so that we could encourage the students and uh, the universities and the governments to introduce um, eco-friendly and climate-friendly materials and products into the market. We would have like um, an advisory board to vet all the products that is th um, sold by the, the retail stores at your local university and we would actually give them the certification if we believe that the products are made by eco-friendly materials and wouldn't harm the planet that we are living on. Yes. And finally, what, what, what will all this become? I mean, what's the good of it? We would have like outcomes from the green circle and from the certification of eco-friendly materials. But the most important thing is that we should make the grown-up guys, I mean like the adults <laughs> sitting in the front row, we, we, we have to make you to, to, you know, to, to join in our, our efforts to address the problem. For, for the governments would be actually one of the main, um, main action roles in, in, the, in this process. And we would actually s um, sign petitions from our, from our, our um, conferences. We would have resolutions to make advice to the authority so that they would maybe take our advice and you know, get on going. Um, we would also have like professional students could do their, could do the environment Im impact assessment. That is, they could, they could pr pr um, pr um, provide advice for 
for example, a uh, construction site at your local university, we would evaluate if the program is actually um, is actually good to the to the environment and wouldn't harm, for example, wouldn't emit a lot of greenhouse gas. And finally, I think uh, all of you would know who she is, right? Well, what's her name? <laughs> yeah, Greta Sundberg. She's a Swedish girl who is only, I think, 15 years old, but is really changing the world. So what, what's so unique about her? I think it's her persistence. She actually first persuaded her parents to quit eat, eating meat. And then, well, she went on to go strike for one day per week at, at her school. I mean, we, we may not necessarily have to, to do a strike for classes in the, at our university, but surely we, do ha we have to do something to save the planet. And we, b we believe the green circle that is proposed by us would be a great initiative to start this process. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Group 6. Um, may I request uh, Professor Nane Kara to um, comment on their presentation, start the discussion from there? It's very interesting. And uh, can you just uh, explain a bit more about uh, how you, uh, about your uh, the suggestion about, you see these worms? How, <laughs> is, uh, that was not very clear to me. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, actually, in my university, I have yeah. uh, my friends, they are working on uh, research, uh, yeah. doing some research on yeah. building a plan. And which is, uh, and they will breed some red worms, and then okay. this kind of red worm can digest the food waste and transform it into uh, a compost. Yeah. Like for, uh, I I never, I, I don't know whether you guys heard about uh, furry composting. Furry composting is yeah. kind of breeding worms, okay. and then to try to um, digest the food and turn yeah. it into like convert the organic and composting yeah. uh, compostable. Materials, materials into food or bedding materials. materials. Yeah. yeah, all you, you have, have to do is quite, quite simple. I, I think that a lot of people think that worms is a kind of disgusting, uh, or maybe we would treat them like killing them, but actually they can be uh, our allies <coughs> and, and friends in fighting against uh, climate change. All you have to do is to uh, uh, like find a paper box and then put some uh, soils and water and all you have to do is to provide some water, like moisture for the worms to grow and then you can put the leftover in inside the box and, then, and also the worms and the, w the worm would just directly like literally eating the food. Yeah, and, and that's the whole concept of uh, furry composting. Yeah. Is there any way you could introduce this to school children? These methods, uh, uh, we 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 didn't like we didn't uh, promote it in in our school, but we are doing some uh, in industrial scale. But we are thinking about like everybody. I, I just I, I want to have a home message that um, even though we are not uh, an engineering student, like from engineering school or science school, you can also make use of this kind of technology to, for example, breed the worms in our home to solve this problem. Because I remember there's a uh, research like study, uh, all you have to do is to breed one kilogram of worm, then it will just naturally uh, decompose one kg of um, the food, yeah, to solve the food waste problem uh, in like at home or inside a campus, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you could incorporate some of those thoughts into your proposal and improve it a little bit, maybe to take it to other sectors, uh, not just to think about the industrial level, maybe to take it into um, school level or to your level wherever you can implement it. All right, thank you very much. Um, is yeah, there I any other comments? Yeah, of course. Um, um, it was a very great ex um, uh, explanation, of course. Um, uh, good solution for the environmental, one of the environmental issues. And at the same time, I just wanted to uh, ask about 
there is a big challenge, of course, threat from the nuclear base at the moment in the world. So have you ever thought of, is this a big uh, uh, climatic issue also at the moment? Have you thought of anything regarding this matter? Um, regarding nuclear waste, I think um, our presentation focused more on what the individual can do. But regarding nuclear waste in general, I think right now the development in solar energy, uh, thermal solar energy and solar panels and also wind energy is so huge and uh, the projection for how much it can fulfill our needs is big enough that some people could also advocate for taking nuclear power plants off the grid totally. Uh, obviously people who are experts in the field of energy would know better whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, but from my perspective personally, I think the damage that's done by nuclear leaks, for example, nuclear spent fuel leaks, is too big of a, of a threat to manage, that uh, instead using fully renewable resources would be a smarter idea. And again, uh, in our presentation, we try to focus more on something that an can be could be done on an individual level. That's why we thought uh, something like the worms or these small ideas that can be implemented on a household scale, uh, the small contributions would add up to a big contribution at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just to uh, kind of put it all together, I think you all have to be congratulated because it is a very timely uh, suggestion and coming from the youth is what the rest of the world should really take on your messages. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, shall we invite group number one for their presentation? Um, that is on alcohol, tobacco, and substance use. Let's give a round of applause to the group who's going to discuss about alcohol, tobacco, and substance use. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are from Group A, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Substance X. Our group name is ATSYN. What does it mean? A, alcohol, T, tobacco, S, substance X, Y, U, and now what? So it will be a uh, program of uh, a globalization program. So this is our team. Okay, back to the international research. Uh, according to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, uh, drugs, according to the drugs, almost 275 million people use drugs in 2016. Is that the low number? No, I don't think so. However, to 2015, it also 450,000 people uh, has been used. Over usage of alcohol, 3 million deaths in each year. It almost 5.1 percentage of the global burden of the alcohol disease. And also smoking, 7 million people per year die from tobacco use. All of these numbers are combined the low number, a lot of you have been suffering from these diseases and these kind of affected ATS. So what we came up with that, uh, we've discussing about alcohol, tobacco, substance X, and uh, these our facts, and we will inc it will be include underlying issues. Because of these underlying issues, we will come up with 
the problems, it will how to address our problems. It will be represented by Excel, how we address th these problems. And it will be solution. So solution does not enough for us. So how we will measure our solution? It will be came up with again indicators. And the top of that, uh, it will be our goals to achieve by our team. So I will hand over by Excel uh, in order to implement our, uh, in order to represent our program and project. All right, moving to the project. So now I'm gonna talk about our project and our network. But first we need to ask, to answer the question why, why we are doing this. So we have three main reasons for doing this network and this project. Mainly, we have noticed our social environment seems to be ha seems to have rapid increasing negative impact on ATS, alcohol, tobacco, and substances. Secondly, we have noticed the absence of the actual youth movements. We don't have actual contributions toward this problem, while the most impacted people affected from ATS impacts are youth. And thirdly is our survey. So the survey that we have done yesterday, we have asked 61 members and participants from AUA Youth Forum about three main questions, and based on that answers, we came up with this project. So our survey were about three questions. The first one, have you experienced a negative impact on your surrounding about, uh, as a result of ATS? And surprisingly, 79% of the 61 participants and volunteers who contributed in that survey answered with yes. 79% is like a huge number. The, th the second question, do you think that alcohol, tobacco, and substance have a negative impact on our health? And then, do you agree to join an international youth network to tackle this? So. 97% of you guys answered with a yes. So what is it? You may notice our official logo there alongside with AUA and the Youth Forum as, an, as a sign of the real implementation and official launching of this network. So the network is Alcohol, Tobacco, Substance, Youth Network, ATSYN. So we are a youth network and platform that help youth, I mean, it's from youth to youth, helping us to tackle ADS negative impact. What's our objectives? We have four main objectives. Divided, we divided them into two stages, before stage and after stage. Before, what we mean by before stage is the addiction level, like when the youth reach a dangerous level. So three main objectives that we are doing we are raising youth awareness about the ATS negative impact. We are organizing events and activities to tackle this. And we are doing a lot of collaborations with official agencies like WHO, the United Nations, and other youth organizations. What about after stage for people who already got addicted? Um, we will do empowerment. We will give them the feeling that they are not alone and we'll try to help them to overcome all the ADS negative impact. Okay, so moving to how we're gonna do it. First of thing, we left it blank because it's not only our task, it's everyone's responsibility to help on that. So we are suggesting some long-term and short-term solutions that we can all agree afterwards to do it, to implement it. So we use the SMART technique we had a specific goals that we really want to tackle the ADS negative impact, measurable for M. So we are measuring our progress into both the short term and the long term. For short term, we're going to have events and campaigns. I mean, we shouldn't start from 3,000 feet. We can start from the three feet first, and then step by step, we will have the major impacts. Small changes can really make it major. And then A, in, this, in the word smart, is achievable. We can all achieve it. We don't need millions of dollars. We don't need huge venues. We don't need as big as this forum to start with. 
each one of us from the universities. There are three to five members or six members from each universities. We kind of started with our own surrounding, with organizing small events, campaigns, under the same logo, under the same objectives, at the same time. Imagine it in 14 countries with one social media coverage. It's like, wow. In the world is smart, the R is realistic. So it's really not difficult or impossible. We can make it, it's just one by one, and T is the time bound. So for the short term, as I mentioned, campaigns, events, activities, and for the long term, we are planning to have and develop an application, mobile app, that people who are suffering from alcohol and tobacco and substance addiction, they can have psychological consul counselors. Because usually it's about, um, we don't have the resources, we don't have the platform, we don't know as youth where to go to overcome this problem. So that app will be like their friends trying to help and we'll try to promote it. By that time, we will reach to the moment that we have enough members, that we have good publicity, and I hope in a few years' time we can have another gathering for all the EUA Youth Forum participants to implement this. And for time bound, everyone, I just want to tell you that you are officially member of this network. And then I'll, I'd like to invite my teammates to teach you the chair of our ATS Youth Network. And I would, uh, I would like to invite you all to stand up and let's do it together. Can everyone stand up? Random, middle. Okay, so our teammates will teach you first about it. Um, it's easy, it's four movements, uh, and then the last part is a, a, like a, is a casual dance. You can just shout the letters, easy, and it's up to you. All right, three, two, one. Ooh, all right, now, now we'll do it together. Now we'll do it together. It's easy, right? All right, three, two, one. Everyone, please, A-T-S-Y-N. 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 Ooh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Exactly what we wanted at this time. All right, great. Um, so that is exactly what we wanted from you guys to network together to build this, con uh, keep this connection um, throughout to um, develop this, um, the Asia, which is yours and mine. All right, so um, shall we start off with the panel's um, comments? Uh, Professor Nazima, would you like to comment? So thank you very much for that very innovative and extremely invigorating intervention that you did at a very good time. And I think, yes, it's an important problem that you need to address at this stage in your lives. We are also concerned because we want to see what were the deliverable outcomes. Uh, not only how you would uh, spread this through a network of yourselves in the youth forum and to ensure its sustainability uh, without being a burden to the other participants. How is it going to be sustainable? Uh, without making your participants feel that they are involved in something that requires too much of energy. And the second one, the uh, issue that I have is, how would you think about involving, because we really want this to be deliverable even among our school children and among the next generation, not only in our country, but maybe even in your countries. How would you, how could you translate this into something that even at a school level, uh, children can think about because I think it's a problem in our schools as well. Okay. So we have agreed on the no commitment rule, meaning that the youth that are joining us are not required to give a lot of time or effort. It's a matter of impact measurable. So the thing is, when the youth are feeling they're gaining something and impacting their surrounding, they will give it a lot of time. It doesn't mean that you have to commit for one year or one semester toward this. It's an open-ended 
project that we are all are leaving an impact in our surrounding. The second question, the schools is one of our targeted audience and targeted people for the P4 stage. So during the um, campaigns, during the network, during the events and activities, we will tackle sharing the awareness with children about it because they are one of the most important um, aspect of our goals. So besides, uh, you know that uh, in this age, in our technology age, Industry 4.0, we couldn't neglect the, uh, the development of the technology. So people, uh, most of the people, not most of the, all of the people are addicted to our phone. We couldn't even, uh, you know, like uh, shape our eyes uh, from our screen. So I'm thinking of that. Uh, what about we making an app? You know, you know like uh, some of the being causes of the ever addicted to neighborhood, ever to tobacco and substance is that uh, it's one of the loneliness. It's one of the addicted to causes that. So uh, when we feel lonely, we can make a chat with that app. So uh, I, I will feel lonely, so I, I have no one to talk about, so I will talk with that app, and uh, that app would be our good listeners, and we'll talk about and uh, other some uh, kind of the release our loneliness in order to make uh, feel uh, fresh, and if we feel lonely, and so something like that, we can make, uh, implement in that app, some of the uh, psychological consultation will be added as well. So uh, we couldn't implement that app on that our screen because uh, it needs some of a lot of time to make some of the developer. So we can make uh, we can make uh, some generation idea, and we can show you that point. Yeah. So that's on our point. All right. Any other comments from the panel? Ah, hello. Uh, you have a very nice presentation about the uh, kind of a common problem that we see in society. Sometimes the awareness is not enough for people to prevent doing bad things. The networks triggers people to get into a bad loops. And at the same time, the networks prevent people or protect people. Uh, what we have seen sometimes, uh, even for example, tobacco, alcohol, if you take it, uh, people know they are bad, but people take it. At the same time, uh, some people who don't take it because of the network, they are got into the bad loop, sometimes credit. So at the same time, I have seen in some groups and networks, there are people who can escape from the bad things. So do you think is there's a something which protect the people uh, doing the bad things? Sometimes this may be a mix of the network and the awareness, or if there's an another third thing, which take it. So it's an, a challenging question for you. All right. So we'll answer the question into two parts. We having to overcome and we need to prevent and protect. So for protect and prevent, we should create environments. I mean, because of the society, people will get addiction. Because of the so society and friends and peers, people will start drinking and doing drugs and etc. So by creating social, sport, healthy environments which actually align with the six topics that we're discussing in the youth forum. So by creating such environments, by creating such awareness, we won't get into this. For people who are already involved, the thing is they are doing this because of two reasons. It, it's either they are already there and because of their stress, their life, their hectic, so the thing, we will just give them the feeling that they are not alone and there are a lot of people, as we said in the statistics of the research that we've done, there are millions of people who are affected. So millions of situations that we will face in our network. So the thing is, we will try to give them the feeling to overcome. We will try to create a full understanding, educate people, so by then we will reach to the level that we can overcome the ATS negative impact. All right, thank you very much. Small comment. Of course, uh, in Sri Lanka, some years ago, so there was a huge campaign, very creative campaign against al uh, alcohol and tobacco, especially tobacco in the buses and the pub public places. So they were, of course, using very creative advertisement type of very uh, things. Uh, 
just to humiliate people who, uh, of course, utilize or use uh, uh, tobacco, um, and also uh, some other alcoholic things in the pu public places. So, have you thought of any such? I mean, very creative at through, through very creative advertising, I mean, uh, through those things to have an awareness among the youth because that way, because when anybody and everybody is, I mean, they don't like to be humiliated from the society. So, if people feel like humiliated when they are doing such things in the common uh, people, so have you thought of such things also? In each one of us, in, in each country is each one of us, we got similar campaign, but the thing is we haven't got an international campaign that like tackle the same problem. So yeah, as I mentioned, they're not alone. You're not like you're not doing something bad. There are millions of you. So if you give them that feeling, they will feel as they are part of the society and then they will not be alone and they won't start keep doing the things that they are doing it. So social media is a good platform that we are planning to do. And when the social media is in 15 countries, it makes a, a major impact. That's going to make a major impact. 15 countries. Can I ask a small question? Uh, what sort of an official assistant uh, you expect to prevent uh, ATS? Official uh, assistance? What sort of an official assistance you can expect to prevent uh, ATS? Official assistance? Yeah. So for such youth movements, we would need an official recognition. Somehow we would need funds, although it's not, it's not gonna be like um, the barrier to start the things. So in order to make the things implementable, we need the official support to address the youth movement toward this. I mean, there are a lot of youth activities, youth societies, youth organizations, but no one is giving us enough attention to start the things. So recognition and a little bit of support would be enough for us to start. All right, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's, let's now invite the group that is going to propose, uh, present their proposal on mental health and well-being uh, in the cyber age. I didn't want to um, stop you at 10 minutes, which was the instruction I received, or to stop the discussion because it was so interesting to listen to all that. Um, let's try to keep our time um, around 10 minutes in your presentation and head to the discussion. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, students and professors. We are the team dealing with mental health problems. Firstly, uh, we want to show you some video about what are we dealing with and what kind of problems we are facing today. Okay, so we're going to do the first presentation, and later on we're going to show you the video. Okay, we're going to move on. Yep, what we are trying to do is normalizing mental illness. It means make the mental health problems as normal as physical health problems. Have you seen someone who are given a lot of medicine when you go when their story needs to be heard? Have you seen someone who are told to be hospitalized when their story needs to be heard? We want to make changes in this kind of situation. And what we propose is, first, what is mental illness? First, mental illness means 
some kind of mental condition you face in everyday life. First, it's like eating problems. First. Second, it's like sleeping problems. Third, it's like anxiety or sadness or whatever, whatever you face every day. And what does this tree depict? You guys remember what we did yesterday. We did tree um, assessment. We showed that there were some kind of similarities in, in what we face today and what we see as a goal. So we thought that if we can talk to each other or share our experience together, we can make changes and we can be someone's help. But we also know that it is really difficult for someone in need to seek for help. So we focus on those around them. So that's what we want to do. We want to introduce you, hashtag we care too, the movement that matters. So instead of urging depressed people to reach out for help, we want to focus on those people around them. We want to involve everyone into this movement. We not only care about those people who we care, that's our friends and families, we also care about our own mental health. So we, we want to help people to know how to tackle mental health through this kind of movement. And when they face mental health themselves, they can help themselves. So what does this movement do? It ensures proper engagement between those who want to help and who need help. It involves two parts, online and offline. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Lorena Liu from Peking University, Beijing. And let's see together what we're gonna to do. Uh, our interventions will be divided in two parts, the online one and the offline one. Let's see the online part first. Okay, we will establish a website, uh, maybe uh, set up an app and also post some vlogs online, as well as uh, host some online forums. Through all this information, we post online. We hope people can learn about our movement, learn how to treat people with mental illnesses, and how to detect some signs of depression. And for those who have mental health problems, we think uh, they can learn how to uh, treat themselves and learn where to find some instructions, some specialized instructions. Okay, let's come to the offline interventions. We have three main offline interventions. The first one is to open workshops or uh, hold some activities at both schools and communities. We will hold these workshops and activities to people facing mental health problems and also their family members, their friends, or the people surrounding them. Like, uh, do you know AA meetings for someone uh, addicted to drugs or alcohol, we will say, uh, set up a similar one, support groups, to encourage them to share common feelings. Through this, they might think that mm, I'm not abnormal because everyone could uh, have struggled or maybe struggling and suffering. And I'm not the only one, I'm not alone because someone is here for me. The second one is to improve consultations with specialists. We really did want to encourage others to seek help from some specialists and psychologists. Maybe we can provide some souvenirs or some gifts like keychain and uh, bottles printed some uh, information of the institution on it. And also we will distribute some brochures as well. And the last part is mental health uh, as a compulsory subject in universities. We want the school to make the courses of mental health problems compulsory to the, uh, to the freshmen, that means students of the first year. And also during these courses, we'd like to hold some field trips to make people more open up to the public. Okay, that's my part. So this is a huge project and a movement. So how can we raise funds or money for this? In order to make the project more feasible, we are thinking about three ways of raising funds. First, we can seek for a company sponsorship. Second, crowdfunding is also very useful. And certainly, we can 
get money from the government. So the future vision of our movement can be stated as following. We want to drive government involvement in the movement, and we are also talking about networking. We want to network with other voluntary projects which embrace mental health, for example, Me Too. Also, we want to get funds from med medicine fees directly to patients. We are thinking about build a mental health care system, just like the physical health system we are using right now. And lastly, but not least, we want to broaden the spectrum to a global scale so that we can involve everyone into the system to help create a supportive environment. Considering the fact that one billion people are estimated to have a mental or substance use disorder throughout the globe, we believe that this movement is long overdue. Because this, this can happen to any one of us. You, me, all of us. In fact, one in seven people around the globe face mental disorders or substance abuse. And this does not even include those who are unaware of their own illnesses or the ones who don't reach out. How many of us in this very room can say that we're not going through anything? Take a moment to think about that. Being clinically diagnosed with MDD and anxiety myself, I, three years ago, I can speak a little bit about this whole thing. And I stopped taking my medications and stop seeing a psychiatrist because it was difficult for me to f travel back and forth to see my psychiatrist. So I understand that it's, it's very meaningful for people who are mentally unwell to have this user-friendly application which we can use at any time, anywhere. And you'll never know that a simple download might, from the App Store might just save your life. Having said all of that, being mentally ill does not make you a dangerous person. Although this is, this, is, this is a misconception that is widely spread, people need to know that it's normal to go through this. And we, as the pillars of the future, will change that misconception through this movement we call We Care Too. So with that, I thank all of you, and I urge all of you to continue and spread the awareness and join our movement. Before I end, I would like all of us to watch this video, and then we can open the floor for any questions. You know that feeling where your thoughts scare you or make life tough? Sometimes it feels like no one else in the world has those thoughts or feelings. No one seems to know how difficult it is to deal with your feelings. And it's not easy to share your deepest secrets. You might think something is wrong with you. Or you might worry what other people think. And all of that makes your thoughts and feelings worse. Our culture has created this environment of shame. Until the 1960s, society sent people away if they had challenges managing their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Over time, we learned that we didn't have to be afraid. We learned how to help people get better. We became hopeful. But there are remnants of those images in our culture today. Which is why some people still feel uncomfortable talking about it. The stigma has taken new forms too. With more access to more people all the time, it can seem like the world is telling us it's not okay to be anything but perfect. The truth is, everyone has thoughts or feelings that can be hard to deal with. So why do we make it so difficult on ourselves by judging others who could be going through the same challenges we are? What if, instead of seeing labels, we saw people who are struggling and could be there for them so they didn't feel so alone? What if we looked past our fear of mental health and started to talk about it in a constructive way? What if, as a society, we used empowering words and healthy images to help people feel supported? Maybe then, more of us could feel comfortable telling others when we're having a hard time. Maybe more people would get the help they need. And maybe one day, we won't have to talk separately about mental health and physical health, but just health. 
The truth is, each of us has the power to change our culture. Will you join us? Share this video with a kid, your neighbor, a friend, and help us break the stigma of mental health. With this movement, you will never be alone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, shall we start with uh, Dr. Padmar De Silva to then comment? Uh, let me congratulate you on a very nicely presented and uh, like I like the way you presented because all of you joined together, like you shared everything and you had good concepts to introduce. Like uh, for one, SDG three, you were going back to SDG, not your group maybe, but you were talking about SDGs. So let's talk about SDG three. SDG three is on health and well-being. So basically health and well-being, well-being, how do you quantify well-being? We don't really talk about well-being, but well-being is mental health. So in that sense, your suggestion that each university, the first year, you should have a uh, mental health course, maybe a well-being course, because it will capture everything. So congratulations to you. And uh, like, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. One little thing, uh, you all did yoga and meditation and other aspects, uh, which has an Asian culture. Yeah. You might be able to bring those also together to improve well-being before it happens as a preventive. Some of those more simpler aspects can be incorporated into your app also. Thank you for that very comprehensive presentation. What I liked about it is the fact that you have thought it through to uh, maybe greater detail than some others to think even about how you would fund this because sometimes we find students bring a lot of proposals but they fall by the wayside because it hasn't been thought through to a finish and this is too important a topic to, for us to let go. You also know, you've understood that even in universities we can have uh, uh, the pressures of courses itself bringing on uh, mental health or well-being problems. So it is probably a very timely intervention. And maybe in some of our schools, our very competitive schools, our uh, you know school children also go through these uh, issues. So once you consolidate this movement, if you can actually widen its scope so that we can include maybe even members of the younger generation so that they don't have to come to university to deal with these solutions it would be a very uh, good thing, and so I wish you all success. Thank you all. Thank you. So interesting presentation. The physical health and the mental health are two sides of the, the same coin. Sometimes uh, mental health is uh, more important than the physical health, and the people uh, undermine the mental health. As a result, many problems people face in the life. And you suggested several suggestions how to improve the awareness of the mental health and how to face the challenges. And do you think any kind of a way people can do a, a self-recognition of their mental health problems? For example, I it's a common issue sometimes people don't like to ask, people don't like to accept they have the problems. Uh, the, the physical health is quite different. You feel it, you even openly say and ask the help and the people don't say it. Uh, so this is the part. And how do you think in, in, in your way, how do you support for the people, for the self-assessment of Kay. the mental health? Thank you condition? for the question. Um, for to answer it, um, through this movement, we've got qualified professionals who can assess your issues Besides that, we can we also have an application which is very user friendly for everyone who can who think they are going through something. They can so also evaluate themselves through that because this application can somehow become a telehealth service provider. So I hope that through this application, online and also offline intervention, we can all com combine and fight for this uh, project and continue to spread the awareness and fight everyone's well-being. Yeah. That's all. So this is one way of breaking the stigmas um, 
through using the cyberspace uh, to your advantage. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Um, let us... Let us now invite the group who's going to uh, present their proposal on the theme of nutrition. protected their intellectual properties, so you need to enter the password to enter it. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Good morning, everybody. Are you everyone? My name is Yu Huan, come from uni uh, Peking University and Group 2. Our topic is nutrition. Yeah, uh, well, uh, do you have your breakfast today? Uh, do you have your breakfast every day? Uh, maybe not. Uh, we want to set up an organization named BH First. Break bad habits first. We divide breakfast to break and first. Yeah. Uh, and okay. Why do most students skip breakfast? You know. Maybe, maybe you are in a hurry or have no time. Maybe you have not enough money to buy a healthy breakfast. Maybe you don't feel hungry uh, because we have five times uh, five, five meals uh, in a day. Maybe, okay. But according to research, the risk of heart attack will inc increase 27 percent if you don't have your breakfast open, and risk of diabetes. This type two will increase 20%. And you are going to a sleep in the morning, maybe in class, and be in a bad mood. Okay, what should we do? Please welcome my group mate to introduce our project. Okay, thank you for introducing me to the stage. I'm Akane Kuma from the University of Tokyo. So let's talk about what can we do to prevent this problem. So we've come up with an organization, BH Fast, yeah. And then this is how the organization works. So down here we can see the organization. Um, this organization will provide food to the to a shop that is very near to the university. And maybe the food is made of um, protein, it's just nutritious. We can provide nutritious food very cheaply. Um, and then this shop is placed very, ne very near the university. So every student would pass the shop before they go to the university and then it will be easier for them to get to the shop like between classes. So the idea is you pay a very low price to get a nutritious food. This price is cheaper than the ones that you could prepare, even cheaper than you could prepare yourselves. And you go to a shop, and then you uh, bring your breakfast, and then you can eat it later in the classroom. So this tackles all the problems you have. So it's a ready-made uh, ready breakfast, so you can uh, take the breakfast with you, so it saves time for you. And then it is very cheap, so you can like avoid the problems of like not having breakfast because we don't have enough money. 
and uh, for the problems of appetite, because you can take the breakfast with you and you can eat it like uh, anytime you want, so um, the problem is saved. So how can we provide nutritious breakfast in such a low price? Um, our organization is thinking about asking for the companies to for sponsors. But how would a company help us? Why would they help us? And um, this is what we are thinking. Ha do you guys know uh, like a forum where all the companies gather together to introduce themselves to the students, like recruitment? For example, Boston Career Forum is a very um, known one. It's a very um, popular one. And do you know the cost of attending such a forum for a company? It is very costly. So if we could provide a place for the companies to introduce themselves to the students, it will be much um, cheaper for the companies to sponsor us than to give money to the platform of the forum. This is why we can have sponsors from the companies. So yeah, the flow diagram. We get money from the companies and we provide services such as putting um, pamphlets and then um, showing, the vi showing the videos in the shop. And using the money, we provide healthy breakfast. Yeah, that's the diagram. And um, for the university students, yeah, they can get their breakfast and then they go to the university so that they can have a productive life. Um, we can also invite the university students to work in the shop so that even the poorest among us can have a breakfast. This money um, that we prepare our breakfast and to give the students comes from the sponsor and the revenue we make from our breakfast. If we could do this, like, um, and then after the breakfast, we would um, also provide juice, coffee for free for the students so that the students can come by between classes to have some refreshment. This way, this university students will use a lot of these places. This could become a second library for the students. If more students come here, more companies may like to, maybe they will, there will be like more companies helping us. This way, by having more sponsors, we could open this shop like everywhere in our nations. We could build a shop like ev uh, beside every universities so that every one of us can have a nutritious breakfast. And since we are the future of our nations, if we could do this to all, if we could provide nutritious breakfast to all our university students, we could have a productive nation overall. And if we could do this globally, we could have a productive, uh, productive um, planet overall so that we could tackle our problems better. Thank you. <laughs> do you have any questions? All right, let's listen to the comments of the panel. Yes, thank you for that presentation. Oh, at the moment, well, at least in our university, we have a canteen where well, all three meals are provided at extremely subsidized rates, and uh, I hope it's nutritious. <laughs> I really don't know about it, but uh, at least it, it provides uh, local food that, you know, it's not fast food and things like that. I'd like to know whether you have any comparable institutions in, in your universities and whether you're going to replace them or you're looking for ways to supplement food uh, options for students that you already have. You know, do you have anything like that, subsidized uh, canteens or eating places in university that you, you might join into this program? Or are you looking to have something completely different, uh, uh, you know, to replace canteens or you don't have things like that in your universities? Thank you for the question. So I'm from University of Indonesia. Basically, in my country, in Indonesia, we don't have, uh, we actually have canteen, but uh, usually the canteen starts at, starts opening at around nine, and the food isn't, uh, is not even ready. Uh, and the problem is like, uh, many students, uh, 
I see this problem especially for because I'm from the dental uh, fields. So most like uh, the health students from the most of the university students from the health fields. Uh, for is, uh, for example, in my country we have this kind of like um, um, culture which 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 we have classes uh, starting at uh, seven or eight, and we have no class uh, starting later than eight. So uh, it's sometimes like uh, we we uh, got up uh, late and we didn't have much time to prepare for breakfast and anything else. And uh, the canteen is also not ready. So uh, we just come up with uh, this idea of like uh, opening a healthy breakfast. Like maybe you, uh, we can like place uh, the cafe or the booth like uh, in front of the gate of the university. So everyone would like pass by before entering the university. And it's, 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 it's gonna be uh, much easier for like every student who passes by to just like uh, pay and take it, pay and take, and then uh, go to into the classroom as uh, also has been explained by uh, Akana, uh, that, uh, Akane, that um, uh, this food is uh, very easy to, to be taken away. So uh, it's a uh, ready food and it's easy, uh, you can just like carry it away. Thank you for that initiative because having a good breakfast will save a lot of visits to the doctor later on in your life. So. The fact that it comes from students and uh, change behavior, uh, for which obviously the institutions also have to support you, uh, is wonderful. Uh, it's just that maybe you should address the quality of the food and the source of the food. You spoke of the institution providing. It was not very clear to me as to whether it was sort of homegrown, like home gardening and organic could also be brought in, and eating more vegetables and those kind of little bits and pieces you all picked up could be inserted into that. Thank you. Yes, if you don't get into the habit of having your breakfast in the morning, um, of course that's going to create trouble in your later life, right? So it's a very good initiative. Um, congratulations on that um, thought that you had to incorporate this into your system. <laughs> Let us invite the next, thank you very much. Let us invite the next group um, that is going to present their proposal on the theme of nutrition, uh, theme of physical activity. <laughs> they're not going to keep calm, they're going to keep moving. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Heng Nan Sui from Myanmar, and uh, this is our group, right? Our so uh, in today's world, uh, in today's world, uh, you are struggling to do physical exercises. Lack of time and motivation has become a big problem. And we believe that our greatest innovation, our latest innovation, will help solve this problem, uh, help solve this problem. And so uh, it now is the time for our product uh, now is the time for our product, and it's Sporty Sum. Oh. I'm sorry, sorry, please. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just in a rush, you know. Like oh. I have to do exercise. Uh, Sam is dying. Oh, what, what are you talking about, Sam? Your boyfriend? <laughs> no, no, not my boyfriend. It's actually my little cute pet, and I haven't been caring for it for so long, and now it's dying. Oh. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, do you have a couple minutes to explain what it is? Um, oh, well, I don't actually, but okay, I'll try. Uh, so basically what you see is um, this my little cute uh, hamster, Sam, and uh, it gives me daily notification and I have to take care of it. Uh, so it usually feels hungry, so I have to do exercise regularly. 
but sometimes when I don't exercise, it gets really fat. Do you see? It gets sick. So I don't want, don't want my pet to be sick and fat because it also uh, it, it's more prone to some uh, cardiovascular diseases or cancer or diabetic. And who wants a diabetic pet? So okay, so can you explain how it works? Oh, well, there is actually nothing extraordinary. So you just have to buy a watch, a nice and stylish one, and then you have to install app on your phone. It works both for Android and iOS. And then you enter your parameters, such as weight and height, and you're ready to go. Oh, so what exactly does it measure? Well, you know, there are three major uh, things that it measures. So first, it acts as a tracker. So for example, like a step track, uh, so it basically works on accelerometer and GPS. So for example, you walk or you do some physical exercise and it, it will count and turn everything, that every your step into a virtual money, which is energy. So you can use this money in a virtual world as a virtual transaction. And the second, uh, second thing is that I told you about the weight and height parameters. So you insert it and it will count, uh, it will calculate your BMI instantly. So for example, you can uh, then insert it several times. For example, you've done your exercise uh, after a week or w in a month, and it will calculate your uh, BMI, and it will uh, provide you a graph. And the third thing is that it, it will uh, measure your blood pressure. So it has inserted, so we are talking now about the smartwatch, you know, and it has a combination of PPG, which is a photoplasmography, and EKG, electrocardiogram sensors, that will measure your blood pressure anytime, even during your sleep. Oh, I see. Oh. And I think your watch is looks so fancy. Uh, how much does it cost? Yeah, I like it too. Uh, actually, I bought it in my university, so the recently the shop opened, and there were I actually struggled to uh, pick one because there are two types, Huawei and Xiaomi. But, you know, I went with Xiaomi. And uh, usually at AliExpress, they cost around $50, but at that shop, they provide 20% discount for a student. You know, that's a great deal. I think that they are negotiating with the companies, and more students will buy, the higher uh, discount will be. Okay, but I think it's just a watch. Why is it so unique? Oh, come on. No, no, no. It's not just a watch. It actually has uh, several applications, both in virtual world and in real world. So when we're talking about the virtual world, you can see that you can have different type of pet. So mine is a hamster, but for you, I guess it would be suitable. You can have a choice. For example, it can be a lion, a cat, or dog, or any cartoon movie from, for example, from Madagascar. And then if you're, say, let's say you're uh, hyperactive, you do exercise every day and you get collected, accumulated those energy points. So what do you do with extra ones? You can actually transact them to your friends all over the world. For example, you're from Japan, I'm from Kazakhstan, I can give it to you mm -hmm. in, a blink in, a, in a second. And... Oh, <laughs> that sounds interesting. I want to buy it too, yeah. Well, I haven't... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I haven't told all the benefits of it yet, so you have to be uh, tentative. So it also provides a discount to a local shop, uh, sports centers, eco shop, and shared buys. So for, uh, for example, let's say you have some extra ones, you gave it all to your friends, and now you don't know what to do with extra ones. So what do you do? You go to your uh, later local shop, and then, for example, you want to buy some sport wear, and it will give you a discount. Or you, wanna you, you can go to eco shop, and buy some fruit and vegetables, or you can use a shared bike with these discounts or vouchers. Oh, that's nice. I'd like to try it, yes. Yeah, I can uh, show it where it is. Okay, let's it go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So I guess we have seen some guest first about our sporty son. And there's more to it, uh, although it's not available in the market yet. Uh, I can, we can assure you that there are obvious advantages. First, it's uh, just a combination of current technology, and that's why it's uh, so simple and easy to use. And it's readily accessible, plus it offers discounts for students. And uh, it offers like long-term incentive to keep doing exercises every day. And you will get coupons in return. So, what are we waiting for?
Keep moving. And save Sam. <laughs> Someone already bought one, I see. All right, uh, it's open to the panel to have uh, give some comments. Dr. Chaturanga, you can start. Yeah, uh, congratulations and very interesting. Uh, actually, you have uh, what I saw in that was that you have combined the gadget with the real world benefits. So that's pretty new. And uh, the problem with the gadgets uh, in the world at the moment is uh, we have a lot of Fitbits, smartphones coming. And uh, it really has uh, taken it to the next level that people are really engaged with the gadgets and monitoring their physical activity. So all over the world, the problem has become after you buy a gadget, initially you are very much engaged, and after a while that you lose the interest. And uh, it becomes a problem to you. You know, when it starts beeping and all, you just shut it off and wait. So have you thought about that also? Like, you know, suddenly your pet becomes a nonsense to you? So the uniqueness that we have is uh, you, you g when you have a pet, you get the motivation of uh, keeping your pet healthy and all. So that's the m uh, biggest motivation that we have implemented here. So everyone likes to have her uh, your pet in a well, well condition. So hope uh, the youth will engage with that. So you have thought about it like that. So yeah, very That's the points you are going to accumulate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. So maybe we'll create some forums, or uh, you know, like uh, it will. Uh, you can also uh, see what the condition of other pet is. So it will be like you know, a motivator. So someone pet is dying and your is uh, healthy. So you like you are competing and so on. And it also can be extended further uh, to have some notification about your general health. So you insert all your data about the blood pressure, about your activities, <coughs> and it will provide a graphic like uh, your um, cons uh, what g so general condition of your health. So I don't think it would be um, so uh, for a conscious person who is uh, thoughtful of his or her health. Uh, I think it will be very uh, interesting uh, on a for a long period of time. It's quite interesting the length that you have um, thought about these apps and the, the projects that you were uh, you're trying to implement. Any other comments from the uh, panel? Well, uh, very interesting uh, kind of the stuff that we think and do experiment. Uh, well, uh, you were discussing about the, the normal activities, walking, exercising, and other things. How do you integrate it? with the normal thing. Then if you think about the previous group was talking about the breakfast. Now, how do you integrate the breakfast with the, this kind of a scenario uh, to feed him? Is there any creative thoughts on that? Um, I was thinking about we could build this mechanism of like uh, take in and burn out like this, this kind of like mechanism that we have just described is about like taking physical exercise and uh, keep recording the data of physical exercise. But what if we like combine the data of the calories that we take in by like eating breakfast and stuff? So this could be like a, a, a more comprehensive data of the take in and burn out. I think that's probably a way that we could integrate these two things. Yeah, just to add, you just take a small photograph of your breakfast, that's enough. There is a machine learning algorithm which calculates the calories and put into your profile. And uh, there is a social network which decides who is the winner of the day uh, with respect to the, the calories gain. Then you keep uh, getting among the people and also, yeah, yes. Any other comments from the panel? Congratulations on that nice, very uh, innovative presentation. One, uh, maybe I'm sharing my experience with you because like uh, for the last two years, we have been uh, sort of taking part in something called the Pulse Global Challenge, where a group of seven have to engage from one institution. It's a uh, similar, similar platform, you are given a Fitbit and you have to engage in the challenge in variable depths and severity for a period of 100 days. So my first question he asked, how do you keep the 
momentum to keep uh, engaged in that activity. But my sharing of experience is that uh, when you have a competition within the teams and even within the within inside the team as well, that will give you some motivation. But you all have also suggested that uh, maybe sharing and uh, may, uh, getting discounts and having a Bitcoin-like thing for where you can exchange it for some other worldly, uh, some material goods or some food or something like that. So that's that's your imagination and your innovation in action. So all the best to you. All right, let's give them a round of applause. And a round of applause to all the participants who came up with really nice, innovative ideas uh, to better our future. Thank you very much. Over the last few weeks, um, the university had a, had a few mini fora where uh, the Colombo University students have come up with some proposals uh, for the AUA, um, and uh, among which um, the Faculty of Science, a group of students have um, proposed a project where, um, where they're, they're tackling the problem of unhealthy food um, that circulates in the market and to specially fruits and vegetables where they're trying to promote organic, organic farming through the university system. Um, and then there are four um, project proposals from the Faculty of Medicine where they, uh, they're using the cyberspace um, to tackle um, problems um, um, where they uh, address the uh, topic, the health and well-being in a cyber age. So we will gather all these um, proposals and uh, forward them to AUA um, to be implemented in the future. So your proposals, um, including all the suggestions that you gathered from the panel, uh, let's improve them a little bit and um, we will gather them and forward them to uh, be implemented because we see some really interesting proposals coming from you. All right, thank you very much. We had six very innovative and informative presentations and we are yet to receive the results or rather to get the top three presentations out of these. All six were really good and this probably will be implemented in your countries, in your regions, in the near future. With that, it's time for us to give away the certificates to the participants of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019. So to do the honors, let me cordially invite the Vice Chancellor of University of Colombo, Senior Professor Chandrika N. Vijayaratna on stage to give away these certificates to the participants of the Youth Forum 2019. And me. let me add this. First of all, this would be probably one of the hardest tasks that I would be doing. So please beg your pardon and don't mind if I mispronounce your name. I'm really sorry, my apologies. And then uh, it's time for me to start with our participants of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019. Mr. Thomas Pangpun from Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. Mr. Chanya Wong Wispeng from Chulalongkorn University of Thailand. Thank you. 
Ms. Li Hung Ling Sylvia of Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, China. Ms. Feng Yiting from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, China. <laughs> Ms. Ho Wing Yang of Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, China. Mr. Din Muhammad Shakman of Nazarbayev University. <laughs> Mr. Dastan Ayambagan of Nazarbayev University. Mr. Mills Akhmetali of Nazarbayev University. <laughs> Mr. Yerner Zedpizov from Nazarbayev University. Ms. Aijan Urazbayev, also from Nazarbayev University, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Ms. Inju Zolimbetova of Nazarbayev University. Ms. Liu Jiliang from Peking University, China. <laughs> Mr. Zhang Lantao from Peking University, China. Mr. Yu Huan from Peking University, China. Thank you, Madam, for joining the presentation. And I invite Dr. Padmala De Silva from the WHO to give away the next set of uh, certificates to our participants. Mr. Karim Ayman Ismail Mohammed Khalil from Seoul National University, South Korea. <laughs> Ms. Sanjin Shin of Seoul National University, South Korea. Ms. Kwon Eun Cho from Seoul National University.
And now from the Tsinghua University of China, Ms. Wingxin Zhang. We would like to have your applause, our volunteers. <laughs> Mr. Zhu Wen Li from Tsinghua University, China. <laughs> Ms. Yin Danting from Tsinghua University, China. <laughs> Ms. Qingyi Wang from Tsinghua University, China. Mr. Maxias Gunavan from University Universitas Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Muhammad Faza Solan from Universitas Indonesia. Ms. Chorina Mega Noviana from University of Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Obed Timotheus from University of Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Azil Ibrahim Muhammad Abu Talib from University of Malaya. Ms. Ko Chia Ting, University of Malaya. <laughs> Mr. Muhammad Farhan bin Mahmud of University of Malaya. <laughs> Ms. Nina Izyami Mokhtar of University of Malaya. Ms. Noor Efrina Binti Aznan of University of Malaya. Thank you, Dr. Padmala de Silva, for joining the presentation. And now I invite Professor Hiti Arachi, Director of Sri Pali Campus, to give away the next set of certificates. And now let's hear it for our participants from the University of Tokyo, Japan, Ms. Kana Okada. <laughs> Ms. Akane Kuma of the University of Tokyo. Mr. Zubaza Ajida from the University of Tokyo. <laughs> Ms. Kaori Okado of the University of Tokyo. <laughs> Mr. Naoya Takashi of the Tokyo University. And now to our participants from the University of Yangon, Myanmar, Ms. Yamin Tazin U. <laughs> Mr. Hain Tan Sui of the University of Yangon. Ms. Su Ye Son of the University of Yangon.
Mr. Ai Chang Ong of University of Yangon. Ms. Wu K. Kang of University of Yangon. And now let's hear it for our participants from University of Colombo, Ms. M. A. Hapuarachi. Mr. M. M. Fernando. <laughs> Mr. C. G. R. Fernando. Ms. Hashini Gimhani Kapalarachi. <laughs> Ms. Yuvi Amanda Parami. Thank you, Professor. And now, the most awaited moment of all the group members. Job well done. Yes, indeed, all the six presentations, they were very informative as well as innovative. I repeat it again. But we do have selected the best out of the best, the top three presentations, and I have the results with me. So to give away the certificates to the winning groups, I invite the Vice Chancellor of University of Colombo, Senior Professor Chandrika and Vijayaratna on stage once again, along with Dr. Chaturangran Singha. And the third place goes to group number one, ATSYN, the alcohol, tobacco, and substance. The group leader can collect the certificates of all the group members. Put your hands once again to these winners of uh, the alcohol, tobacco and substance presentation. Becoming the second runners up at today's presentation. Thank you. And let's hear it for the first runners up. With the presentation on Sexual health. You are awarded the second place today at the presentations of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019.
Yes, once again, let's put our hands together. It was the first presentation of the day, the sexual health. And now it's time for us to see what the winning presentation is. And today's winning presentation at the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019 happens to be physical activity. <laughs> Having a little pet at your home and you'll be able to make it. It was all about your health as our theme this year, Arogya Paramalaba. Meanwhile, physical activity, how important it is, here they are. Thank you and we hope these programs, these apps and everything will be launched and get in use here in the Asian region as a startup. So let's hear it for once again to all these participants at the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019. Thank you, Madam, for joining the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Chaturanga. And meanwhile, as we moved on for all these presentations, as we are almost reaching the end of the closing ceremony, but yet we do have a lot of interesting things happening here a bit more, and meanwhile, would like to hear from one or two of our participants about the experience, about the time you had here in Sri Lanka. If you would love to share your thoughts with us, as today will be probably the last day that we'll be meeting, and it might have been your first day in Sri Lanka, would like to have one of you on stage. Any volunteers from the participants to share your thoughts, maybe? Yes, please put your hands together. All right, um, I would like to thank all the organizing committee for their kind welcome, their being friendly, supportive. Um, all the participants, you guys were awesome. Uh, so far, I, I managed to memorize all the names, I mean, like 70, 80% of them. And yeah, unfortunately, it's the last day, so it's, I'm not good at goodbye words, but then yeah, uh, for this land of paradise, Sri Lanka, I really like it, I like it, and I hope that I'll make it again for a longer time so we can get um, to see more beautiful places and etc. So thank you so much once again, and I hope that it, won't, it, will, it will be last for a long time friendship with all participants, volunteers, and we will get to get to know each other more and more, and we'll have all that networks and let's get the maximum benefits of this forum and out the outcome of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Azil Ibrahim Muhammad Abu Talib from University of Malaya for, for sharing the experience. Probably the same thought might be with you, but I uh, would like to hear any more thoughts or ideas, any pr probably different, something different from what um, Azil got to say. Hmm? All right. Go ahead. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much for like giving me this kind I of opportunity. Um, I did this kind of like speech a few days ago, but I'm I'm gonna say a totally different thing today. Um, firstly, thank you very much for all the participants, all the, all those who involved in this kind of forum. Um, I was expecting a prize today. I didn't get that, but I think I did a great job. And everyone, every one of you did a great job, including the volunteers. 
I really want to thank all the volunteers who were involved in this program. They dedicated all for us. They used time, they used a lot of their efforts for us. I'm really thankful for this. If it was not for you, this forum didn't succeed. And I want to thank all the members who involved in this program. I really felt the power of everybody. Like, like as you seen in the presentation, every presentation was shining and amazing. And uh, it was really difficult for like professors and deans to choose three, uh, three groups among them. It was really difficult for me, but I, wa I wanted to be included in that, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, it's totally fine, but I'm really proud all of you, all the members who um, joined in this program and all the members who did the presentation today and all the members who performed their talents on the stage the previous day. They are, and we are, we youth are the future of the whole community and whole Asia and, whole, and the whole world. Thank you very much again for this time and opportunity. Thanks a lot, and that's what we wanted to hear from all of you. And yes, once again, a big thank you, and we truly are honored to be a part of this Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019, Colombo, Sri Lanka. And with that, there's a whole bunch of personalities to thank who were behind this amazing task throughout the months, I would say, because it's not just a one night's work indeed. So it's time for me to invite Dr. Darshi Thuradenia from the organizing committee of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum to deliver the vote of thanks. Well, that was an amazing speech, I must say. I know that you're from University of Tokyo. I'm sorry, I don't, I can't remember your name. Right, okay, the duties. Um, the Vice Chancellor, Senior Professor Chandika Vijayaratna, uh, and uh, the dignitaries from the WHO World Health Organization, and also the one uh, who left the UNFPA. Uh, Rector of the Sri Pali Campus, Colombo University, and the director, I cannot see, however, the director of the UCSE. And of course, the st student delegates of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019, volunteers, and my fellow organizing committee members, it is an honor and absolute privilege to stand before you today to propose a vote of thanks to all those who helped us in making the U Asian University Alliance, uh, Universities Alliance Youth Forum to 2019 a success. As you know, the theme of the Youth Forum this year is well-being beyond health. And the forum was organized under six themes, namely mental health and well-being in the cyber age, nutrition, alcohol, tobacco and substance use, sexual health, physical activity, and climate justice. On behalf of the organizing committee, I offer my grateful thanks to all our resource persons from University of Colombo, Sri Pali Campus, National Center for Cybersecurity, the UNFPA, and the Act Four Theater Forum for sharing their knowledge and expertise with you through the week. An event of this magnitude cannot be realized without the dedicated commitment of not one person, but an entire team. I am grateful to our Vice Chancellor, uh, Senior Professor uh, Chandrika Vijay uh, Ratna, for having led us, uh, led, that, led that team with mature foresight and for placing her trust and confidence in us. Not so young, but youth, youthful organizing committee. We are also thankful to the former vice chancellor, even though she, he is not here today, uh, Senior Professor Lakshman Disanayaka, for initiating this alliance. I would say a much needed alliance for Colombo University and also to all the 15 universities to address regional and global challenges with new perspectives and approaches, which of course we just saw through their presentations. I offer my thanks also to all our distinguished panelists, 
for their insightful comments to this group of undergraduates from Asia. I'm sure they're encouraged and motivated to take the knowledge and experience they gained during this week to their peers, university communities, countries, to the region, and also to the world. We are grateful to the AUA Secretariat, World Health Organization, and Sri Lanka Tourist Board for, for providing funds to organize this event. We are grateful to the director of the UCSC, Professor Heva Gamage, even though he's not here, uh, and his staff, especially Dr. Samantha Ma Matara Arachi, for attending to all our logistical needs. It was absolute pleasure working with you, your efficient team. We are truly blessed to have such talent at Sri Pali campus. On behalf of the organizing committee, I extend my sincere thanks to, prof uh, to the rector of Sri Pali campus, Professor Ranjan Hetiarachi, and uh, uh, Mr. Poojita Dimel and his colleagues who uh, brought the aesthetic uh, flavor to the forum. I'm sure this, that was the most eventful and colorful day of the forum, field visit to Sri Pali campus for student delegates. It was uh, not only the AUA youth who enjoyed it, we enjoyed it very much, and it was certainly a great experience for our volunteers to work together with Sri Pali campus volunteers. I'm also grateful to Dr. Dharmakirti Sri Ranjan uh, of the Sri Pali campus and his absolutely talented team for doing the media coverage for the AUA Youth Forum 2019. I extend my sincere thanks to our media partner, Sirisa, for covering this forum. We thank all deans, directors of institutes, the registrar, Mr. Edward, the bursar, Mrs. Jaya Surya, for releasing your staff to organize the Youth Forum. We are immensely grateful to Mrs. Sarushika Patirana, again, she's not here, but we are immensely grateful to her, the Senior Registrar of the Academic and Publications Division for uh, convening meetings, handling all the administrative matters associated with this event and also for providing space in her office uh, for us whenever we needed it. We are thankful to Dr. Uh, to Professor Nazima Kamadin, who just left uh, our, the, our symposium chair for her unstinted support throughout and Dr. Shashika, Shashika Manoratna, Director of the International Office of the Columbia University, and her staff, Ms. Ka Kalhari Pereira and Mr. Buddhi, for their support in handling air travel, accommodation, transport uh, of student delegates, and selection of volunteers. Our sincere thanks goes uh, to the Senior Assistant Registrar, General Administration, Mr. Prasanna De Silva, and the Works Engineer, too. I offer my heartfelt thanks to Professor Suranga Silva, again he's not here, but I offer my thanks, of the University of Colombo's Tourism Unit and Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, who trained the volunteers and handled all the hospitality-related matters of the Youth Forum. Our team of volunteers, I am sure, of course you heard from them, so it is just, I'm reiterating, the team of volunteers, I'm sure, you enjoy this forum as much as we did, and thank you for displaying your love and loyalty to your alma mater by helping in, the, in hosting this forum. It was in the organization of this forum that I was able to meet and appreciate the sheer talent and capabilities of my colleagues across this vast university, such as Dr. Hiran Jayavira, Dr. Inoka Pereira, Dr. Jayani Vevalvala, Dr. Yasanta Madhura Peruma, Dr. Ruan Gamage, Dr. Kokila Kona Singha, Dr. Manori uh, Ari Amarajiva, Mr. Achinta Bandara, Ms. S. Puanita, and Ms. Dulani. Their attention to detail and unwavering commitment has played the deciding role in shaping the success of this forum. Of course, this team was led by Dr. Chaturangaran Singha, the chairperson of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019, with his considerate and efficient guidance. Thank you, Chaturanga. On behalf of the organizing committee, I extend my sincere thanks to the academic and administrative and non-academic staff of our university for making this forum a success. My sincere thanks goes out to our master of ceremonies today, that is one of our volunteers whom we selected during the interviews, uh, Ms. Natalia Virawardana. Finally, we want the youth of the Asian Universities Alliance to know that we believe in you to make a positive and healthy change 
to the existing issues of our region and the world. In conclusion, I kindly call upon our Vice Chancellor, Professor Vijay Ratna, uh, to declare the closure of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019. Well, what do I say to such a youthful and exuberant forum? All I can say is, I were one, thank you, and that we officially close this ceremony, but the connections and the networking will go on forever. So thank you very much, and all the very best. Enjoy the rest of the day in Colombo and on the site city tour as well as safe journeys home and take back wonderful memories from Sri Lanka. Thank you, Madam Senior Professor Chandrika Vijayaradna, the Vice Chancellor of University of Colombo. The formality is being done. The closing ceremony of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum being closed as that. But the celebrations are not yet over. It's time for some pieces of entertainment rather, yes, from our very own participants. They are ready to sing for us. They are ready to dance on this stage. They're going to take over this stage. And I guess they'll be here in a while. Are you all ready to go ahead? Yes, let's put our hands together. There's a lovely lady who will be walking onto the stage to sing for us. The others too can get ready for your next set of entertainment items. Uh, I heard that there's going to be a group dance as well. And meanwhile, thanking you all for joining the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019 from the day one itself up to today at the closing ceremony. We had the closing marks, the official word of thanks as well. And once again, from the volunteers aspect, I would like to thank the organizing committee, Dr. Chaturanga and Dr. Darshi and the energetic team who are collaborating and who are bringing this the best out of the best and giving us these opportunities, undergraduates from the University of Colombo representing all these faculties, institutes, the Sri Pali campus and other faculties as well. So once again, a big thank you and it was an honor to be here at the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum. And meanwhile, I guess the stage is uh, in dark but our entertainer is to take over. It's all over to you.
till our participants get ready for their entertainment items, we do have something for you on screen. Let's take a look.
and it's time to have them on stage. Shall we put our hands together and welcome these participants of the Asian Union Cities Alliance Youth Forum? They're going to entertain us.
And yes, we're going to have Inja now on stage and she's going to sing for us, Hero. Shall we put our hands together? <laughs> Welcome Inja on stage. This is Hero again. I think this thing must be close. Like this. Would you dance if I asked you to dance? Would you run and never look back? Would you cry if you saw me crying? Would you save my soul tonight? Would you tremble if I touched your lips? Tell me this Now would you die For what you love Hold me in your arms tonight I can be your hero, baby I can kiss away the pain Would you swear that you'll always be mine? Would you lie? Would you run and hide? Am I in too deep? Have I lost my mind? I don't care, you're here. Thank you so much. Th that looked so beautiful, the lights. Thank you, Inju. We really enjoyed it once again. Thank you. <laughs> One final song. And this is probably something that you would love to enjoy. Something that all of you would enjoy rather together. It's none other than our theme song for the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019, Colombo, Sri Lanka. Upadha Fonseca and the team from the Sri Pali campus, they made it a reality. This beautiful song with blending all the musical traditions here in Sri Lanka and around the Asia. So it's time for us to take a look and then join with Ivo Asia, the theme song of the AUA Youth Forum 2019.
Asian University Alliance Youth Forum 2019. Three hearty University cheers for the Asian University Alliance Youth Forum. Hip hip. Hip hip. Or rather, yes, it is a wonderful, exciting week that we spend here at Kalamu Sri Lanka. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your day. Refreshments are served upstairs, and then you'll be enjoying a city tour as well around Kalambo. Thank you all. I wish you. Take care. Have a great day. And with that, we invite all the volunteers, the participants, and all who are part of the Asian Universities Alliance Youth Forum 2019 to join the special lunch, uh, which is being ready for you at the Marino Beach Hotel. So. But first, you can join the refreshments which is served upstairs at the UCSC Auditorium. And then you can join the uh, lunch outing probably. And then we'll be having the special Colombo City Tour, especially for these uh, participants, the delegates from the AUA. Thank you.
Keep your head.